Generating electricity with wind power is becoming increasingly common. It's cost effective and efficient. Wind is actually a, a form of solar power if you want to think of it that way. It's the sun that causes the winds to blow. In any event, it's clearly a renewable energy source. And wind farms, uh, collections of wind turbines, can be um, they can be owned by independent producers, but they are considered centralized power. And this is different from what we think of as windmills, uh, like we're used to pump water in the Netherlands or on the Great Plains. Modern wind turbines are based on a different sort of principle and have a big power capacity. They are available with horizontal axes or with vertical axes. In, a, in your typical wind turbine, there are three blades. They are long, um, 50 to 100 feet long, although some of them are longer nowadays. And they're two to 300 feet up in the air. In this box behind the blades is a thing called a nacelle, this housing that includes a generator. And so the wind uh, turns the generator and produces electricity. This nacelle is about the size of a large tractor trailer rig. Uh, here's a person peeking over the edge of one being installed. Uh, here are some uh, blades being transported. So there's a person for scale. Uh, here's one being installed. That's a, that's a truck bed. Vertical axis turbines are, are used in places where, uh, where they're needed because of some restrictions or other. They're not as efficient as a horizontal axis, but, um, in some, in some places they're effective. And here's one in the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Here is in the lower right corner, a vertical axis turbine being installed. Here are two people installing one of the propellers. This is uh, up on the second level of the Eiffel Tower. Down on the first level of the Eiffel Tower is a uh, set of pavilions with uh, restaurants and uh, visitor exhibits and shops and so forth. And this vertical axis turbine provides all the electricity to power those pavilions. Most common is this horizontal axis style. Wind speed gets faster the higher you go in elevation. And this is important because uh, physics tells us that the amount of power increases with the cube of the wind speed. So you go higher up in the air. Let's say you go up high enough that the wind speed doubles. That's not hard to do. Two to the third, the cube of the speed, uh, if the wind speed doubles, you get eight times the power. And then if you have longer blades, um, they sweep an area and you know area is something squared width times length, let's say. So two times greater blade diameter gives you four times the power. So higher and bigger uh, give you many, many times more power. Although <clears throat> this doesn't necessarily in increase the number of kilowatts per acre because each turbine has turbulence behind it and it has a wind shadow behind it. So the, the bigger they are, the farther apart you have to locate them. Now in these um, turbines with the propellers, there are adjustments and many of them are automatic. So uh, pitch and yaw adjust how these blades are, are um, tilted into the wind. They can adjust if the wind speed is too high uh, or if it changes direction. And uh, there are brakes that can actually stop it if it gets too crazy. And then uh, to produce 60 cycle power, um, 
the the pitch and yaw adjust the frequency somewhat, but uh, it's common to send the voltage through an inverter. In any event, the U.S. Department of Energy has these wind resource maps. Uh, this particular one gives the wind power at 50 meters above the ground, which is 164 feet. There's another wind, wind map that uh, lists the wind power at 80 meters, or 262 feet above the ground. And then there's this categorization um, from poor to superb. Notice that superb is out here on the ocean, where it's really windy. But outstanding is also on the oceans, and some pretty darn good power sources through the middle of the country here. The Great Plains area here, uh, from Texas up through North Dakota, is ideal wind power country. And what's good about this is, uh, so there's there are good wind resources, the land is flat, and those wind turbines are, are up high on poles, so the farmers can keep farming their land. They lease it out to the power producing company, but then they keep farming, so they get double use out of their land. As we mentioned, there's turbulence behind these blades, so um, these turbines have to be carefully located. Here's NASA doing a test, trying to figure out where the tur turbulence is coming. Wind power is quite economical, which is one of its benefits. Another benefit is it doesn't need water. It's just really got a lot going for it. Um, however, a big problem that people talk about with wind is the impact on birds. And we now know that what happened um, that caused this, this uh, big rumor that uh, wind turbines kill birds is the first uh, wind farm in the U.S. was located here in California. It's called the Altamont Wind Farm. It happens that this is right on the Pacific Flyway, and they didn't know that at the time. So they planted this giant wind farm right where millions of birds migrate every year. So um, a lot of them get killed. We now know enough to look for where birds fly and not put turbines there. There's another problem going on on the East Coast with bats getting killed by turbines, and we're not sure what is causing that yet. I would just point out that um, while wind turbines do kill some birds, according to the Government Accounting Office, uh, nationally, in the U.S., wind turbines kill about 30,000 birds per year, so that's terrible. But domestic cats, according to the GAO, kill 100 million birds per year, and buildings, building windows, kill over 500 million birds a year, over half a billion birds per year. So these things are the bird death traps, and so this just uh, just to keep keep it in perspective, uh, any bird death is is a tragedy, um, and buildings are by far the worst. Now, um, a a criterion to consider when installing wind farms is the aesthetic impact, and there are government agencies whose job it is to work on evaluating visual impact. Um, and a, a problem is that wind turbines tend to be located in scenic natural areas. Uh, some of them are off the coast, so here's Cape Cod. This is a simulation. Um, there was supposed to be a big wind farm in Cape Cod, and the wealthy landowners there found out about it and mounted a big uh, uh, fight, and the wind farm got canceled. This here is the architect um, simulating what the turbines will look like. So what we learned from that is that involving the community in public process is critical. 
there's some talk about noise impact. Um, the the noise from a, a typical wind turbine is similar to an appliance in your house, like a dishwasher or a refrigerator. It's about 40 to 50 decibels at 300 yards away. Um, so yeah, that's some sound. It's not horrible. There's another issue that is still being researched, and that's the issue of infrasound, which is low frequency sound that human ears cannot hear because of the way our equipment is, but our bodies still still receive this infrasound. Um, you probably know that elephants communicate with infrasound. Elephants, elephant sound is not dangerous. I don't mean that. I just mean there are animals in nature who uh, pick up and use infrasound. Humans are not among them. So stay tuned on more research about that. Finally, um, wind turbines do not have to be gigantic. They can also be small. And when they're small, they're called micro turbines. This one in the lower uh, lower left is in the Middle East in between uh, some famous buildings. These two on the right are an apartment building in the Pearl District in Portland. And if you, this is part of uh, Powell's bookstore. And if you drive down, I think this is 11th maybe, uh, drive down 11th in the Pearl District, you'll see this lead gold or lead platinum apartment building, and it gets part of its power from these micro turbines up on the roof. Finally, here are some sources for you if you're interested in getting more information about wind. Here are some of the uh, places that do research and offer standards. American Wind Energy Association is a good place to look.